Hi, I'm Pete Dowsett, Head of Products here at Relab Development. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use LX480's ambience algorithm. So before we get into any audio examples, let's quickly discuss what the ambience algorithm is designed to do. Now, in any real environment, you'll get a mixture of early reflections and reverb tail. So the early reflections are the more discrete echoes that arrive back at the listening position very quickly. So these are normally off the nearest walls and other boundaries to the listening position. You also get the lush reverb tail that is more dense and harder to discern as an individual reflection. Now, all of this is working psychoacoustically. So even though I'm saying the word discrete echoes, we don't really hear these echoes as separated from the original sound source, but these early reflections usually gel with the direct sound and color it in some way. Now, the ambience algorithm is designed to reproduce that sort of effect without the comb filtering and other negative artifacts sometimes found in other early reflection engines in digital reverb. And again, this is down to the same sort of randomization process that is found in the random hall algorithm, first introduced in the 480L in 1994 with their version four update. So when is the ambience algorithm useful? Well, in a lot of contemporary recordings, you'll get some sources like vocals recorded in an extremely dry isolation booth. And a lot of the time to get that to blend well with lots of other acoustically recorded sources, you'll need to introduce some early reflections to help mesh those two things together. Early reflections can also help to smooth out the reverb tail. So you get this sense of this individual dry source going from a small pinprick in the middle of the stereo image to be a bit of a wider, deeper type of dry sound. And then that can kind of nicely hand off to the lush reverb tail. So it kind of smooths out that feeling of the dry sound to the reverberated sound. Another use for the ambience algorithm is in post-production, where you might have recorded some dialogue after the fact and need to add some early reflections to make it sound like it was done in a real space. So let's go ahead and dive into a Pro Tools session and see what that sounds like. Got a Pro Tools session open here, and it happens to be the same session as we've used on some of the other algorithm exploration. So you should recognize the track. And I've also kept some of the other effect sends that we used for vocal halls and for the rooms as well on the instrumentation. So this should all be familiar. And I wanna show you both what the ambience algorithm sounds like on a dry source on its own, and also how that will then also help to blend in the dry sounds to those lush reverb tails. So let's start by listening to the lead vocal without any effects there. So hopefully what you're hearing there is it sounds very dry, very unnatural, and kind of very thin in your stereo image. And what we really want to do is give it a sense of space, but without pushing it too far back into the distance. So let's see um, what adding a bit of ambience does. And now I'm just going to load the default ambient settings, and then we'll tweak from there. Okay, so that adds some width and some depth, um, but it sounds a little bit slappy to me, and we can tweak this a little bit further to make it gel a little bit better with the dry sound. So one of the first things I'm gonna do is actually go and turn this reverb tail level setting down. So as well as our early reflections patterns that are randomized, we've also got this kind of subtle sense of reverb tail. I'm gonna turn that off so you can kind of hear the more early reflections on their own. Okay, so you can hear that it doesn't decay over time in the same way. 
And you can really hear those kind of more discrete echo-like properties. And what I want to be able to do is get a sense of that, but it not to sound too slappy. So the way I'm going to do that is pretty similar to how I've done it with other reverb algorithms and start with reducing the size until I'm at a point where that sort of feeling goes away. Great. So that's feeling a little less slappy now, but what I'm going to do is also bring in some of the top end out of it a bit more because it's still kind of drawing attention to itself a little more than I'd like. Great, and now if you're familiar with the random hall algorithm, there's another couple of important parameters, and these are called spin and wander. So basically, these are effectively like your depth and your rate of a conventional modulation algorithm. So I'm going to mess with these to try and um, reduce that amount of slappy effect a little further and kind of smooth it out. So that's a lot tighter now. So the spin is much more like the rate and wander is more like the depth. And the last thing I'm going to do is increase the reverb tail level just slightly again so that you just get that smooth handing off rather than it being so discreet. Okay, that's great. So what I'm going to do now is play you that muted and um, put it in in the mix so that you get the sense of what it's doing in the context of all of the rest of the instrumentation. And hopefully what you should be hearing is the vocal goes from sounding very plastered on top of the mix, very dry and very narrow, is that it kind of widens and softens and gels better with the rest of the implementation, but it doesn't sound like you've added this really long, lush reverb tail. So let's listen to that in context, starting with the ambience out. So that's nice, it sounds a lot softer now, but there are a couple of frequencies that are poking out to me and I really want this to kind of be felt rather than heard. So I'm gonna go ahead and start boosting some areas I think it might be, find the spot I don't like and dip those areas out. Great, so that blends in a lot better and hopefully when it's turned on and off, you kind of miss it rather than explicitly hearing it. So let's now bring up the um, vocal hall and you can see that you'll be able to get more hall without it sounding artificial now. Okay, so let's hear that again. And what I'm gonna do is just turn on and off the ambience with the hall in. And hopefully what you're gonna hear is that the hall just doesn't sit as well without that ambience. And 
And let's hear that in solo so you get an idea. Just a couple of live tweaks to that, bringing the reverb time down and also getting rid of some of that like upper mid harshness around 4K has really set that ambience back. And hopefully you're hearing now that gelling sensation with the rest of the mix rather than the vocal sounding like it's just plonked on top of the rest of the mix.